Would you teach me more about alchemy? Certainly. Well, I'll think it over. See you later. I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Weren't you supposed to come here with your guardian? It's been so hectic lately, people will keep turning up out of the blue. He gave me the papers and left me at the gate. You must be used to that, though. I'm not the first novice here, am I? But that wasn't very considerate of him, was it? It's been so hectic here lately, novices arriving one after the other. The last one didn't even have a letter, and you'd think his backside was on fire, the way he kept looking over his shoulder. You took him without the letter? You didn't find that suspicious? My guess is he wanted to hide from someone, but he's a priest and knows how things work in the monastery, so there was nothing to prevent him from being accepted, at least temporarily. You're a different case, though. Are you able to read? Naturally. I wouldn't be here otherwise. So then, are you ready to enter the Order of St. Benedict and renounce forever the temptations of this world? I am. Then you must rid yourself of all your worldly possessions. Sell them or give them to the poor and needy or donate them to the monastery. You may not enter this place burdened by worldly goods. Inside the gatehouse is a trunk in which you will find monks' robes. Put away all your possessions and dress yourself in the habit. Then you may rest a while, while I go and see the prior to arrange matters for your acceptance. God be with you.
Is someone there? What do I have to do to enter the monastery? You have to know how to read and write, speak Latin, and have a letter of admission from the abbot. But most importantly, your soul must be filled with Christian fervor, and you must be willing to lay down your life for our Saviour. Letter of admission? Great. That's the least of your worries. By the look of you, I'd say your biggest problem will be your lack of zeal, so you won't get the letter of admission anyway. Tell me, are you capable of spending your days in quiet meditation and prayer to our Lord, of renouncing the flesh and raising your spirit to the service of God? What are you looking for? No one's allowed in here. Are you deaf? Leave now, or I'll have someone take you away. This is a monastery. My God, it's over there. Do something. Hey, you! Ah, oh, shit! Leave me... You've been lurking around where you don't belong. Well, you won't forget this in a... This is surely no way to treat one of Sir Radzig's men. I dread to think what he'll do when he finds out. Ah, uh, I didn't... I didn't know that. My... Hey, Henry's come to see us. Believe it. Everyone else praises him. God be with you.
strange feeling being without all of that. I didn't realise how much I'd grown used to it. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life. Brothers in Christ, we have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, obedientia, obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum et vivam. Et non confundas me ab expectatione mea. Suski pe me domine secundum. In loquium tuum vivam, et, et non confundas me ab expectatione me ah. Accept your new name, Brother Gregor and wear it with honor. Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? B. 
Being here in the monastery is my dream come true. Being a monk is so... so exciting. <laughs> well, no one's ever said that before. I'm curious if you'll still be singing the same tune in a month's time. Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite... unexpected. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. I found this piece of parchment. It looks like it's been ripped out of a book. The words mean nothing to me. Ask in the library. It occurs to me you might be the man to ask. I'm looking for some lockpicks. Do you know anyone in the monastery who could help me? Lockpicks? You surprised me, brother. And you, a nobleman's son. But you could ask Brother Solarius. They say he used to be a thief. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Who's in charge of things around here? Truthfully, everyone except us. But officially, Abbot Peter. And soon enough, someone else. As if it so, mattered. Be well. Our life will still be work and prayer. I see. Are there any rifts between the brothers? Yes. From the moment talk began about electing a new abbot, it's been like a hornet's nest here. Strange you haven't noticed. Tell me something about electing the abbot. Abbot Peter is old. When he dies, they'll have to select a new abbot from amongst the brethren. The candidates are John and Nevlas. And if you ask me for my opinion, Nevlas is definitely the right man. Unfortunately, no one cares about my opinion, because novices get no say. Tell me something about life here. Work, prayer, work, prayer, as if you didn't know. We serve God, and that's the central truth of our lives. What are the roles of the various monks here? Someone takes care of the library, someone else the garden. The abbot supervises everyone, and in his absence, the prior. But it's the circators you should worry about. They're the brothers who'll make sure we observe the rule. They can be quite strict, so if you want to avoid getting punished, always act righteously and do your duties honestly. Who's in charge of things around here? Truthfully, everyone except us but officially Abbot Peter, and soon enough, someone else, as if it mattered. Our life will still be work and prayer. Are there already candidates to be the new abbot? Brothers John and Nevelas, but the others have been fighting like dogs because of them. We don't have to fight about anything, though. This John, who is he? A circator, and really just an unpleasant old man. It's mostly the older brothers on his side, because they believe he'll protect the status quo and all the benefits that come with long service here. Tell me something about Nevlas. Nevlas manages the monastery's property. He's what they call the provost. He'd like to bring back solemnity to the monastery, through reform 
and by returning to pure faith. A lovely idea, but most of the monks are against it. Why can't novices vote? They say we don't have enough experience to decide about anything. Don't worry, we'll get our chance. Why is who wins so important? We're young and we'll spend the rest of our lives here. And the abbot decides everything about our lives. Didn't it ever occur to you how powerful he is? Who would you choose as the new abbot if you could? Why should I even think about that when I don't have the right to vote? Gregor, don't go poking your nose into other people's business. You'll sleep better at night. This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, St. Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> so beware. Here are the Fratery and Scriptorium, together with the Library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior and the cicatas, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of St. Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, expect a swift punishment. But I've already told you about the circuit. The library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty, but tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We will be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. Will you tell me something about yourself? There's not much to tell. I lived in Vlashim, and after my father died, I found out I wasn't much of a merchant. So I left the shop to my brother and decided to become a monk. It's peaceful here. There's food and lots of time to read. So you chose to come here? It may seem strange, but I'm one of the few novices that did. I might be the only one. The truth is, the idea of spending my life in a monastery was more appealing than being cooped up in a greasy old shop. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Well, that's all. Thank you for your time, brother. Ah, Gregor, talk to me. 
I'm Gregor, a novice. I know. But I've no time for idle chat. I transcribe books from dawn till dusk. I've been doing it for years and I'll be doing it till the day I die. What, you do nothing else? It is my penance and my blessing. And now, brother, if you don't mind, I'd like to get this page finished. What troubles you? I'd like to ask about something. Can't you see I'm working? Ask someone else. The forbidden books must be in that cabinet. The books stood in there aren't for your eyes to see. Interested in what's inside? Forbidden books, written by the devil himself. Forget about them. That touching is more like a furious, a horrible, abominable race of Christ. The young people have no respect for righteousness. The bell was bad. We were no different. Greetings, brother. I'm Gregor, and I'm new here. Greetings to you, brother. I'm Yodok, the oldest of the novices. I hope you'll like it here in the monastery and that you won't get into trouble. Trouble? You're young, perhaps intemperate. You might easily stray from the rules of the order. I suggest you get to know the older monks. You never know when it might come in handy. I'm interested in the other novices. Do you know anything about Antonius? Only that he came to the monastery voluntarily because he didn't want to work in his father's shop. Antonius is all right. You can rely on him. He won't betray your confidence. He's always happy to help, which is more than can be said for the other brothers. Can you tell me something about yourself? I would if there was anything noteworthy to say. But I'm just the ordinary son of a landowner, now a monk. There's nothing in my past, present, or future that anyone could find interesting. Why did you join the monastery? Because it was better than living in poverty. As the youngest son, I'm not entitled to inherit my father's estate, but he was kind enough to sell off some cattle and send me here. And you know what? I'm glad to be here. It's better than mucking out manure. Who would you vote for as the new abbot if you could? Why do you care? We don't have the right to vote, so we shouldn't get mixed up in it. I'm just interested, that's all. I like John better. But like I've said, it's not our place to get involved. It's enough that Antonius is mixed up in it. Don't you start too. What troubles you? I'd like to ask you something about the monastery.
What can you tell me about the novices here? What can I say? You're here to demonstrate your devotion to God and to live a monastic life. After a year, you can make your vows and become a fully-fledged brother. I meant something specific about the brothers that are here. But you know them yourself. Yodok is an odd one, but he's diligent and eager. Perhaps too eager. Siskin is good company, but a bit too worldly for a monk. Antonius is hard-working and will help you with anything, but prays less than he ought. Lucas is as quiet as a mouse, and no one knows much about him. And then we have you, about who I know nothing. Who would you like to be the new abbot? The old abbot isn't dead yet. It's too early to talk about elections. But if I had to choose between the two who are already putting themselves forward, John would be my choice. What do you desire, Brother Gregor? I'd be interested to hear what you think about the other novices. What about your doc? Be on good terms with him. If you show even the slightest hint you don't like him, he'll make your life hell. He's a slimy little pedant who'll rat you out to the superiors. Once he finishes his novitiate, I imagine he'll want to climb his way up the ladder to at least Sir Cater. He's a man who enjoys ordering others around. That's all. Thanks. My name's Gregor, a novice. You can call me Siskin. Are you here of your own free will, or is this a punishment? Although, it's not important. Welcome to purgatory. Did you say purgatory? You'll see soon enough. Soon enough. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I prefer not to talk about my past. Are you hiding something? Why are you so reluctant to tell me anything about yourself? I'm hiding a lousy past that I'd rather forget. I hate to think of all I lost when they stuck me in here. And also because I really hate the question, aren't you the son of the famed Sir Smil Flashka of Pardubitz? I was rich and I had everything. But then my father began to feel his time approaching, 
So he decided to send a son to the monastery. And, being the youngest, a lot fell on me. I've no head for managing the estate, and they said I'd squander it. Can you imagine? Me, in a monastery. So I took what coin I could from home with me, so I didn't lose out completely. But you didn't have to come here if you didn't want to. No, not if I didn't mind being left to beg alms by the city gate. I had one choice, the monastery or nothing. If it had come to that after my father's death, so be it. But to get rid of me while he's still alive... They must have realized you robbed them. <laughs> I donated some of the silver to the monastery when I came in, just to piss them off. I can just see my brothers, I mean my siblings, arguing with the abbot to give it back. And you stashed away the remainder? Indeed so. What's your plan with this treasure? To get out of here as soon as I can. I'll wait another year or two until my hot-headed brothers cool off a bit, and then I'll take the silver and run off somewhere, far, far away from here. That's all I wanted to know. Please, keep it to yourself. Especially the part about the coin. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I prefer not to talk about my past. Very well. I won't ask. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm still curious about this treasure trove of yours. It's no big terrible secret. Really, it isn't. I just go and read during services. There's no time otherwise. I mean, at other times I don't get to read what I like. And I keep it under the slab so the others don't find it. I'll leave you be. Don't worry, I won't follow you again. Thank you. And please, Gregor. Don't mention it to anyone. How is it that you don't get any penance for missing morning prayers? I've paid off the circators to turn a blind eye. And the other monks don't notice as long as you show your face there from time to time. No one's too awake at that time of the morning. Who would you elect, Abbot, if you could? Most likely Nevlas. He's a fine fellow and he seems honest. But, truth be told, it doesn't matter much to me. A monastery will still be a monastery, no matter who's in charge. If you really want to talk more about it, ask Antonius. He seems to have taken an interest. I'd be interested to hear what you think about the other novices. Tell me about Antonius. Oh, if there was a monk I'd recommend as a friend, with of course the exception of myself, it would be Antonius. He has a calm soul, he's easy to talk to, and you can always rely on him. I'm interested in Yodok. What could interest you about him? He's a no-good rat. He'll turn you in for the price of a turnip. I'd bet my life that if he wasn't here, he'd be a human scout. Bowing and scraping for a few groschen. That doesn't sound too flattering. It wasn't meant to. No matter what you do here, watch out for him. He's got his eye on everyone, and he'll rat on you for even the slightest of infractions. That's all. Thanks. Salve Domina.
I'm Gregor, a novice. I saw you at the ceremony. I know. It was hard not to notice you. And you are? Lucas, also a novice. Don't get upset, but I don't want to talk to you. I'm happiest alone. I'd like to know something about the other novices. I don't know much, but ask away. What can you tell me about Siskin? Not a lot. I don't know him. Actually, I don't know much about him at all. Except that he's not a stickler for rules. You really don't know anything about anyone? Well, thanks anyway. Don't get upset. I'm sorry I can't tell you more. I just haven't felt like getting to know anyone yet. I'd like to know something about the other novices. I don't know much, but ask away. What can you tell me about Siskin? Not a lot. I don't know him. Actually, I don't know much about him at all. Except that he's not a stickler for rules. Do you know anything about Yodot? I don't. He doesn't like me, and he's on very friendly terms with the Circators. That's about it. Tell me about Antonius. I'd like to, but there's nothing to tell. I've never spoken to him. I've never asked about him. You're right there. Life is short. Tell me about Antonius. I'd like to, but there's nothing to tell. I've never spoken to him. I've never asked about him. Will you tell me something about yourself? Guy, there's nothing I can tell you. I mean, where you're from, what sort of life you had before, that sort of thing. I'm a novice, and my monastic name is Lucas. Nothing else matters. Come on. Is there really nothing at all you can tell me? I could, but I don't want to. I'm sorry. I want to stay focused on work and prayer, not on who I once was. I never will be again. What has been isn't important for us. We cast the past aside when we walked through the monastery gates and took our oath. Never forget that. If you could, who would you vote for to be the abbot? But I can't vote, so what's the point of worry? Ask Antonius. He often talks about it, and I'm sure he has an opinion. What troubles you? I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Can you tell me something about the rule of St. Benedict? Seven centuries ago, St. Benedict of Nursia wrote a collection of monastic rules, which we still follow today. They are read at every meal. The fundamental precepts are obedience, work, and prayer. We are fully devoted to serving God. The outside world, beyond the monastery walls, is foreign to us. Do you never want to know what's going on out there? And what should be going on? The sky is just as blue, and the grass is just as green. Perhaps the rulers change, but the greatest ruler of them all will remain unchanged throughout the ages. Who's in charge of things around here? Abbot Peter is the administrator of the monastery. 
but you won't see him. He's always traveling, and on top of that, he's old and infirm. Perhaps the good Lord will bless him with many more years of life. And what happens when the old abbot dies? Then we elect a new one. Are there any candidates to be the new abbot? Yes, there are. Brothers John and Nevlas. Cursed elections. Since the brothers began talking about them, there's only been strife in the monastery. On one side are brothers who'd like to see John as abbot. On the other, those who support Nevlas. And they seem to be capable of fighting about it forever. Tell me about John. John is a circator, and the oldest brother here. It would be only natural if he took the crozier from Peter. He has experience, merit, and composure. He'd lead the monastery wisely. I'd like to know about Nevlas. Nevlas manages the monastery's property. He doesn't have the most experience, but his drive and heart are pure, his faith firm, and his ideas rational. Although perhaps he's too keen to change our routines here, which many brothers don't like. I'd like to know about Nevlas. Nevlas manages the monastery's property. He doesn't have the most experience, but his drive and heart are pure, his faith firm, and his ideas rational. Although perhaps he's too keen to change our routines here, which many brothers don't like. Why does it matter so much who wins? Because the future direction of the monastery hangs in the balance. The younger brothers feel they have to work more than their superior brothers, and that some brothers are more concerned with their own comfort than with worshipping God. The older brothers take a different view. They say the younger monks want privileges they haven't earned, and each side has its own candidate. I thought politics weren't part of the monastic way of life. You're right, but we know nothing besides the monastery, and the abbot's decisions can influence our entire life. Some of the brothers take it very personally. Are there ever any disagreements between the brothers? Unfortunately, yes. The biggest quarrels right now are about the election of the new abbot. They can already see poor Peter in his grave. Tell me something about electing the abbot. The old abbot is practically on his deathbed. There are two candidates. Half the monastery wants John. The other half, Nevlas. And there's no chance they'll come to an agreement. But you've probably already noticed the atmosphere around here. Tell me something about life here. Prayer, work, obedience. That just about sums it up. I remember back when we ate like kings. What they don't. Did you have to finish someone's weeding in the garden again? Yet again. 